The encephalophone is, it's kind of an academic name really, but this is a music-based device, taking brain signal and turning it into music. It just literally means brain instrument. Another way to explain it would be it's a music prosthetic. It converts thoughts into music. My name's Thomas Duell. I'm a uh, neurologist at Swedish Hospital, and I am also a professor in the School of Music at uh, the University of Washington. I was studying brain-computer interfaces, and I was studying music, and I was studying neurophysiology. So it just kind of became a, a kind of a mad scientist project. It started off as an art project. I thought it would be neat. <laughs> Like setting up a rhythm, yeah, and then sorry. it's like all of a sudden it's like sorry. double. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was trying some half dummy chord. That's my bad. What about the if you had the? Is there a trumpet sound? So yeah, you have the there's a trumpet, trumpet sound, trumpet, yeah. and then trumpet. the acoustic trumpet. Yeah, it would be kind of cool. Let's try it. Sure. sure. Yeah, give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> we can completely change the sound envelope okay. of the of the tone, and so it sounds more like a human instrument. There's many signals coming out from many different electrodes, but in one area, it's a, like a resting uh, signal for the motor cortex. We ask people to either relax, where we get the maximum amount of that signal, that's the resting potential, or think about moving. And then we make a scale from one to eight. We chose one to eight for a few reasons, but the first is just, since this is a music-based device, we wanted to come up with the notes of a, of a scale. It was just kind of an art project. But then, I'm at the same time, I'm working in the hospital, and I'm seeing a lot of these patients who have strokes or they have other motor disability from other diseases, ALS or brain hemorrhages or tumors. I begin to, to think I could take this thing I made as an art project, I could use it to restore musical ability to people who've lost it. So someone who has severe arm mobility issues, for example, we're gonna be using the part of their brain that normally controls that arm. We would hope that we'd be able to actually improve the connectivity in that part of the brain. That's certainly a likely benefit, and it's something we would like to study. You got your uh, joystick going. You doing okay? I was originally diagnosed in, with MS in 2005. I was 35. At this point, I have only the, the most simple control of my body below my neck. What Jonathan's part of here is a clinical trial that we started, which is trying to take the encephalophone, which up until this point we've been using with healthy individuals, to see if those people who have motor disability, if they're able to achieve some level of control. So this is the signal that we're reading. It's the left side and the right side. It's not going to be very musical because it's a test. You're going to hear an organ type sound that he's trying to match. He's the piano. All right, here we go. I'm trying to influence the direction it's going. It's more sort of how I'm concentrating. So I'm trying to relax more, trying to move my hand a little bit more to try and make it go up or down. It's kind of the level of control that I have with it. So if I think about relaxing my hand, relaxing my, my mind, then the note will go higher. And there's a little bit of noise in there, so if I start thinking about lunch or something like that, then I'll notice it'll affect. So that was his brain in real time sonified as, as a piano. So now what we'll do is we'll allow him to play freely. Uh, this is fun, but it's also training because he's learning to control his signal.
by doing more of it, I feel like I'm getting better. My days are often not so filled with stuff, so definitely feels like I'm making the music and that's, that's pretty magical.